Hello, Rustfest. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, as you may see behind me, uh, we're going to talk about creating Rust games easily. Uh, but first things first, I also have a clicker. Um, things about me, uh, just like why, why am I talking to you? Why, why is this maybe of interest to you? Um, I'm actually a web developer at Travis CI, where I write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and no Rust anywhere, except in our like, infrastructure, where it, like, Rust compiles, but not on Rust. Um, I also put some stickers outside, but I think they're all gone, so sorry. Um, what is a, like, maybe even more interesting is that I like playing and making video games, and I like hanging out in hackathons or game jams or anything that allows me to produce large amounts of badly written code in a short amount of time. Um, you can find a lot of these things on my GitHub. Um, and yeah, like we, this morning we saw that a lot of people also attended Rustfest Kiev. This was like my first time speaking at a Rustfest, also the event for which I learned Rust in the first place. Um, so I, yeah, so this is Rustfest Zurich, and I was like super excited to be like one of the speakers again. Um, the, at the, when I got the email, it's like, oh, you've been selected as a speaker. I was like, oh my God, Rustfest Zurich, it's gonna be so cool. And, but one of my coworkers was like, so they're having a Rust event in, in Switzerland, and they didn't call it Rusty Fest. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, missed opportunity, but I got you covered because I made stickers. <laughs> Um, I have 200. I will put them here. <laughs> Limited edition. Okay. Um, okay, so back in April in Kiev, um, I was also talking about making games in Rust, uh, but back then um, I, I presented a game that I, used, uh, that I implemented using Piston, but uh, during the research for the other talk, I already stumbled upon um, a game-making framework library engine, as you may want to call it, called GGEZ. And now you can like, guess what I used for this talk, um, GGEZ. And finally enough, um, also, like, the creator of this is actually present, which was like a pleasant surprise in the break. It's like, hey, I'm using your thing. <laughs> um, okay, so what is GGEZ? It's like the name was one of the most confusing things for me in the beginning. It's like, oh, how do I pronounce this? Um, stands for good games easily obviously. Um, it's a library for making 2D games. Um, it's inspired by Lua's Love 2D engine, which is a very nice API and just like creating games for like, like packaging everything you need for an event like a game jam, uh, which I attend. Um, so I was like, ah, this is like a very cool approach and like totally different to the one that like Piston takes. So that was interesting. Um, so we have events and drawing and, and sound um, all in one crate, which is great. And there's also like a module system in the making, which like also aims to extend these things. But it's from like I stalked the, the issues that were like opening and the discussions going on. It's like okay, I'm gonna wait a bit until I get my hands dirty with that. Um, okay, so when I wrote the proposal for for this talk, I thought okay, so what what can I do different this time? So it's not like always the same thing, just like a different game. And I thought it's like, oh, I'm gonna do like a little walkthrough of like actually just like making a game during the talk and just like explain you like what the things do and just like create a small 2D game. And I thought it was like a very good idea to like in the, in the review field for the committee, write Something like, oh, we're gonna do this like maybe semi-live. I do some copy pasting and it's gonna be fine. And it's like, yeah, this is totally not scary. Um, but then in the announcement that happened on the Rust, Rustfest blog, it was like, like a live coding session. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> this, this is not what I signed up for. So there will be, it will be, depending on, def on your definition of live coding, it may not be live coding, but I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, yeah. So if you want to make a game, you should upfront know roughly know what the games should be about um, and inspiration can come from like everywhere and like things that you think about or like things that happen to you and for this game um, I was very much inspired by the music video of Beyonce like from Hold Up the music video and like my roommate was playing it like on repeat all the time and I also watched the, uh, the music video quite a couple of times and I'm gonna walk you through this um, and you hopefully can share my enthusiasm for it 
It features Beyonce um, in this very awesome yellow dress and the baseball bat. And she walks down the street, and she, sm she smashes a fire hydrant, CCTV cameras, car various cars, and um, the coolest thing that is like, I think only happens like in the music video is that just before the, the baseball bat um, hits a thing, sometimes the music stops for like a tiny fraction, and then it just like plays again when the bat hits like a car or something, I was like, that is a very awesome game mechanic. I'm just going to use it. So I created a game, Beyonce Brawls. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is just like a small, small gif. So what's happening is that we have like, like a portrait view um, game, game window, and we have Beyonce walking down the street, which she does automatically, um, which you will later see. And... Um, if I press space in this, um, in this game, uh, she stops and puts out the baseball bat. And then if I keep uh, space pressed, we'll have this little counter that counts up until the hold up appears. And then if I release um, the space bar, we're just going to have the smash swoosh lines and then smash whatever is around us. Um, there's also like a little score thing. And like I also calculate like track time. And in the end, I calculate like a high score from the points that you make and the time that it took you. Um, but all of this is already too much to explain to you in like 30 minutes, so we're going to do like a more stripped down version of this, which looks like this. <laughs> which is, you, you have the yellow dot and, and a couple of like red dots to your left and right, um, but we ha kind of have the, the space pressing thing, and the swoosh lines are, um, oh, it didn't loop, um, it's like a red, red rectangle that, where we do uh, collision calculation on. Um, so, yeah, this is what I just said. Um, we have the auto-moving, like, self-moving player, some keyboard events, spawning, smashable things, and detecting collision. So, let's start. And I have, like, on, so the game is up on GitHub already, and I created a, a sec like, so the full game is on master, but I created a walkthrough branch with commits that are roughly the same steps as that, we will, that I will walk you through. So if you want to follow along, um, you can do so. But yeah, wait, let's start with things. OK, so this is quite scary. Can you see this? OK. So it's OK. I'm going to increase it a little more. OK, so brand new project. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add the dependencies to our cargo tunnel. Um, which is GGEZ, the, the game crate, um, currently in 0 0.3. There is supposed to be a 0 0.4 release soon-ish, and I'm a little bit afraid it will break everything, but we'll see. Um, and also, like, random crate, because I don't know how to create games without randomness. Um, oh, God. So I'm just going to put this in here and save. And then... Um, yeah, it's like, oh, we need to start somehow. And this looks like a lot of code, but in fact, I just went to the ggez.rs website. And then you have, like, this example thing, and I can just, like, copy this. <laughs> um, and uh, instead of librs, I'm just going to use main rs and just paste this in here. And we just basically do um, all of the stuff in here. I hope you can read this. I think it's okay. OK, so let's just try cargo run. And while it fetches um, our dependencies, I'm just going to like walk you through a little bit of what is happening. I really hope this works. OK, um, so what is going on? We get the, the GGEZ crate. We're going to use some of the stuff that it like, prepared for us, like a configuration thing, um, events, the game result in context, which is like um, related to like the drawing that will happen. Sorry. Oh. Like, just like. Oh, more. Okay. Like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, we have graphics. We have um, some primitives to actually draw shapes on the thing that we can later remove because I will use PNGs. Um, some time tracking thing, and uh, here is like the more, the more interesting stuff. We have one struct that is called main state, which will have all our the, um, the properties that we will keep track of because they interest us in um, the course of the game, in this like 
getting started example is just like a, like a little float um, position x. And when we implement this, like the only thing that we do is like give this position x a 0.0, .0 value, um, nothing too fancy. Um, the interesting stuff is happening in um, once we implement the event handler um, uh, trade on main state, um, where we have like the two most important functions, update and draw, which is the things that we oh no, it's flight check. Ah no, okay. So this is the um, this is the example that I just copied from the from the start page. It's a circle that just like moves to the right. Um, Nothing yeah, interesting, it, it wraps around, which we, we look at um, in a second, because here in the update function, we just say it's like, okay, um, every time we call this, so like roughly 60 times a second, um, we will increase um, the x position by this value. Um, and then in the draw function, between the clear and the present, um, we actually draw this, this circle. Um, yeah, and then we have a main function, which then um, instantiates uh, the config, and then we load the context, and then we put um, the context in, in with the main state and run the whole entire thing. Um, so yeah, I didn't even need to learn something about this. You're, um, it just works. Okay, so we saw what our game looks like, and it's kind of like not really a game, it's just like a circle that moves, but the thing is, it auto-moves, and we can directly use this for our Beyonce purposes. Um, so I would just like um, copy over some, like, would just like define some values, um, like how our window should, like the dimensions of our window. So we have like more like, like a portrait style thing. And we can put this in the config. The only thing that you need to change is that this needs to be a mutable thing then. And we just put it like so that the, the title of the window says Beyonce Brawls. And then we take off the, the width and the height from the, the window. And if I run this, this is fine. Yeah, OK. So we have like a few configuration values. And this is it. OK, that's a good start. Um, let's start with the, with the player. Uh, I will also just copy over these bunch of values that we use. So most of these are just like eyeballed <laughs> because it's just like you can then adjust and see how, um, how things work for you. Uh, I defy player X and player Y, uh, whereas because we just walk um, downwards, X will always stay the same and Y will be the, the value um, that we update. So we like move down the axes. Um, I have like a little value for speed so we can adjust like how fast we want this to go. Um, then I defined something like which I call the hit area, which is like the the red more uh, rectangle that will uh, then we detect collision on, or like the, the swoosh of the baseball bat, so to say. And um, and these three things, um, holding speed, holding time min, and holding time max, could probably have nicer names, but they are supposed to be um, keep track of the the time that I keep the space bar pressed. So if I press space, um, I will count up. Um, 0 0.3 until I, heat, uh, until I reach um, the minimum holding time, which is after, like, this is when the hold up appears and after, like, during which I can collect, to tish, um, collect do the collision thing um, until I reach the maximum limit. And then I just, like, then you have this, like, window, basically, of, like, this, um, where you can actually do the thing, um, this whoosh. Uh, you might wonder, it's like, oh, but this is like not actually time. You're just like counting up a value like on every iteration of update, which is true. So this is like not actually time related, and you will see significant differences depending on like what computer you run this on. Um, but for the purpose of this game, I think it's totally fine. Um, okay, so um, let's create a struct uh, so then we can make use of some of these. Um, Values. So I have a struct player that player has an X and a Y. Uh, I use a graphic imi graphics image for both the sprite and the hit area images later. Um, in the example, it will only be just like a colored PNG. But um, later on, you can like have Beyonce and the baseball bat and swoosh and stuff. Um, I will also define H, X, X, Y, and H width and height for the hit box or the, the hit area um, because lots of calculation things. And then um, a field holding, which um, will keep, um, 
which I will use for the holding time um, to keep track of that. And implement it. <laughs> um, this looks something like this. Where's my thing? Okay. Just put this here. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a, a new player. And um, yes, I use unwrap. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and we just like initiate the things with like the constants that we have. Holding will be 0.0. .0. Um, in the update function that we will call in the main stains update, uh, we basically check if if self-holding is 0.0, .0 which means we're not holding. Um, this we will use to like update the player's Y and also the hitbox Y, so that we have like the moving downwards. And in the draw function, um, we just like get the coordinates, put them in the point uh, thing because it's nicer when we draw it, and we just like draw the sprite that we defined. And if we are indeed holding, um, or like our holding value is over the, the threshold of 4.0 that I defined earlier, then we will also draw um, the hit box or the hit area. Um, okay, so if I save this and run curve run, we should already get something that moves. It's not moving. Ah, I know why. Next step. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, I need this event thing, but I think for later I just put it on the slide. Um, because we need to put the player into the main state, obviously. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Okay, so I'll remove the position X and put the player in here. And then in the, whoop, the main state's new, I will just... So instead of like just position X, we now create a new player and give the player the context. Um, and then we can call self player update instead of like the position update and draw. No, that's the same. What? So, okay. Let's try this again. We get a few warnings because I'm not. Ah, okay. I know what this is. This is the unwrap that's biting me. Um, <laughs> Uh, luckily, I have rest. Ah, no. So it's um, the PNGs that I'm trying to to um, draw are not actually there yet. So um, I put them in the resources folder in my example run through thing. So I'm just gonna um, put them in here and try this again. Ah, no. And I also. Uh, I should read my own readmes better because I also need to put this in the target debug thing because for path reasons that I couldn't figure out, but okay, this should work. Okay, so we have Beyonce running uh, down. <laughs> um, and this is all there is right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is kind of boring, even though it moves, which is exciting. Um, let's like implement some more um, functions on our player. Uh, for example, hold and unhold. Uh, do, do, do. Here. Okay, so these are just like um, functions that we will later call when I press the space key. Um, so if we say if if like our holding thing is um, more than 0, 0.0, so there is holding, or like pressing going on um, on the button, then we like count up the holding thing. Um, but in case we reach like the, the maximum limit, um, I will call on hold, so basically reset. Um, and then if we're like, yeah, this would reset it to, as you can see here in the on hold function, um, reset it to 0, 0.0. And this is also if we call hold, if we call hold in the first place and the value is 0, 0.0, we go into this branch, which will then start increasing the hold. Um, and because we need to like call it at some point, um, I can define, for example, a custom, like the key down event, and this goes into the um, event handler thing for the main state. Um, well, Emacs, what's happening? Okay. Um, key down event uh, comes from GGEZ. Um, we get a key code, and we also get modifier keys. And I think this, the last, the third argument is like repeat or something, but we don't need this. 
um, or I don't need this in my case, and then I just gonna match over the key code, um, match for space, and then I call self player hold. Uh, and we're gonna like, do this again. And now if I press space, it stops. And then the thing appears, and then you see this is like, uh, because I never released, there is no release event, so we cannot go on. Um, so we should have something that makes us go on. Uh, and this would be the key down event, which is kind of the same, but in, um, we match the same thing, but instead of hold, we call unhold, which will reset the holding value, and that should, that should be it. So I can press space, and I release it, and then we go on. And if I press it longer, yeah, okay. So this works. So we have sort of like our little mechanism of like counting up, waiting a bit before something happens. And what's next? Um, we need things that we can smash, obviously. Uh, I start with a couple of values that I need. Um, so, as I saw, or maybe remember from the GIF, I have, um, I just line all the things up in, on either on the left or the right side. Um, and those two um, points on like the, the X axis are just like hard coded, like I just chose them, which seemed right and looked kind of okay. Um, I have two things called the spawn factor, which is like the area, which is smaller than like the overall window height, but just like a little bit less because I don't want them to be like too up, like up too high or up too low and just like looks wonky. Um, I have smash builds per screen, so you can say like how many things you want to be like to have generated. And then what I also do is I just use a the same width for all the smashables. So in the in the finished game, I had like a car and the higher end and the CCTV camera, and they look like they have different widths, but in fact I just like treat them all as the same thing um, because it's easier and I don't have to like position things like I just for simplification reasons. Um, okay, so how does our struct look like? It's, um, kind of simple. Um, we just have like x and y values that we then like um, fill in. We have an active flag that I use a lot, um, which is just like we will only like once you basically hit a thing, it will no longer be active, and we stop drawing it, and we like count up score or whatever. Um, and I also have like the little graphic that is just red, but it could be a car or a hydrant, and you can, depending on what kind of smashable thing you have, um, this would be different. Oh yeah, uh, here we also need um, our randomness. I'm just gonna put this up uh, here. So yeah, randomness, because it's essential. <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's implement this thing. Gonna put it here. Okay, so the new function is kind of yeah. Let's just walk through it a bit. Um, for the y, like the the value of the y-axis, I just chose to like generate some random thing that is in um, the spawn factor, and I also still have this like plus 100 to like move it down even a little further. I should probably also put this in one of the configuration values. Um, for x, I just use like generating a, a boolean, so, and then match it to true or false, and then it's like, like left and right, so like, it's like, and sometimes you have these like weird occurrences where like literally everything is on either the left or the right side, so it's like, this doesn't seem right, um, but it's okay. Um, the sprite is a new sprite. Um, yeah, and then in draw, which is kind of, uh, this should probably go into this, because otherwise it's pointless. Um, so, I check if if the thing is still active, only then we draw. Um, and if it's not active, we don't do anything. Uh, okay. So as with the player, we also need to like let our main state know about that we have a thing that we can smash. So in our main state struct here, um, we also have smashables, um, and we don't just have one but we have multiple, so I say it's like, oh, we need a vector of smashables. And whoop. when we create a new game state, um, I just create an, an empty vector and then uh, say basically in the range of like zero to how many smashables I want per screen, um, push new smashables into this vector. 
and then oh wait this can go so yeah just a bit more and then the only thing left to do is to draw things and that goes into draw um i will draw the smashables before the player so that the hitbox will then overlay the um the smashables uh okay so let's see how this looks and if i made a mistake no ah we have things um and when i uh, okay let's wait for here if i now press space we should see that the hitbox will eventually um collide with um things on the left or the right side but we don't have that yet so let's add that um and there's like one place where i would call collision there's probably a like a thing that is better suited but i would call it in the key up event so if we release just before we reset um i would check collision and collision itself i decided to implement on the main state as well Where is it uh yeah let's just put it here um so what happens so i release the key um we call collision and then um we're actually checking like if if the holding like if we're still holding the key and it is over the minimum time because otherwise we had already reset it um i'm going to iterate over all the smashables that we have check if they're active um then do the nice geographical do the boxes intersect thing um which is just like very verbose could probably refactor that and if they do intersect i set the active flag on the smashable to false um i could also play a destruction sound i already picked some um and the sound api is also really nice um or like count up score or all these things um but i would just make them go away and let's see if this works what on to main stage what uh so collision what oh true <coughs> wrong line thank you okay so let's see if i press this yay and this is just like woo and you see i'm very generous with the implementation okay so that was it for this uh let's go back to slides Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Thank you for the applause. Um <laughs> not yet. Um so things that I did not cover because there's yeah, um there's an API for like writing text to the screen and like all these timing functions that are like way better suited to actually time things. Um just like scoring, you can like have this depend on like what kinds of things you want to smash. Um it's a lot of fun drawing PNGs and making those because it makes things cute, but like there's also a certain aesthetic to like just rectangles i think um sounds you can like play them it's like really just like or like load a sound play a sound stop a sound and then you can play around with uh with the values of just like how many things you want to create and like how like how generous you want to be with with the collision and and those values and yeah but i leave this as an exercise to you yeah. <laughs> uh and that is actually it <laughs> so thank you